Um, hi, everybody. Um, firstly, I just wanted to say that it is um, a great honour to be here today and to be given the opportunity to address yourselves and raise some very important questions, namely the potential impact artificial intelligence could have on my generation, Generation Z, and how we should really be discussing and planning for our future. But to start with, I, just, I would just like to give you a brief introduction to me and why a 15-year-old is standing before you to talk about AI. Well, my journey started through circumstances beyond my control. In, in that, at the age of 13, I ended up out of school. So with the support of my, of my family, I embarked on a path of self-teaching. Now, with this newfound freedom and drive for learning and through a chance viewing of a technology show segment covering chatbots, my interest in artificial intelligence was born. So fast forward a couple of years, and after some accomplishments in this field and some recognition and awards, including being named one of the winners in the UK Space Agency Satellite Challenge, I find myself with an AI business on the Barclays Eagle Lab Incubator in Birmingham, helping other businesses understand AI. And if that's not enough, I'm also in the process of setting up a tech-based youth programme that I'm excited to tell you about in a little while. So, as you can see, for the last couple of years, I've been on this amazing journey of discovery, through which I've been very fortunate to meet and speak to a vi wide variety of people of all ages and backgrounds. And while meeting many amazing people, I get asked many questions, with the most common being, what actually is artificial intelligence? And to be honest, that question is one I ask myself regularly. The fact is, on this journey, the one thing I've noticed is how differently the general public, the tech industry, and businesses interpret the phrase artificial intelligence. Basically, AI is an extremely subjective term without really a clear or consistent definition. Therefore, due to lack of clarity, it can be very confusing, especially as the term has meant many different things over the years. So what is it? Well, to be honest, I couldn't actually give you an answer. However, probably the best way to describe the AI we are using in technology today is by using the term narrow AI. And, that, and the best way to, to explain narrow AI would be to say it's very good, even better than humans, at performing very specific tasks on being trained on specialised, highly pre-processed data. However, it does has it, have its limitations, as algorithms are currently very dependent on the data they are trained on, meaning that for some tasks that have limited data sets, it makes training an AI very unreliable. The next type of AI is general AI. The concept is that general AI is a fully constructive cognitive intelligence, just like us humans. However, the reality is general AI is something that doesn't currently exist in the digital world, even though many experts are trying to achieve it. But my personal belief is that we're a long way off from realizing anything close to human level intelligence. Then there is super AI, or artificial super intelligence, which is AI that possesses intelligence far greater than the average human in all subject areas. And as you can probably imagine, that is something we can only dream of achieving. And given the fact that we are nowhere near the level of achieving general AI, we're very far off super AI. Now, the reason I've given this simple breakdown is to raise a topic of how AI is often misrepresented or misperceived. The one thing I found is how different, especially in a negative way, AI is presented in the media. In the past, myself, with the work I'm doing, um, I've been compared to a famous fictional AI company. Yep, in one of my early radio interviews, I was compared to Skynet, a super AI from the Terminator franchise, and asked if I was going to destroy the world. Similarly, just like my, in my experiences, the mainstream media tends to both overstate what is currently achievable and present AI very negatively, presenting the future as dystopian and bleak with AI taking all of our jobs. This indicates either a lack of understanding within the media industry or the fact that based off of um, popular sci-fi dystopias such as Terminator, they can use people's assumptions to manipulate them through fear to tell a story. So this leads me to my main topic, how will AI affect my generation? The truth is, from my own experiences in meeting and giving talks to people my own age, I have found many believe in this dystopian view of AI and are fearful for the future. For which, in the short term, we do need to alleviate this fear through better education with, um, with understanding of the current limitations of AI. But of course, in the long term, there is some truth to the fact that in the future, some jobs will be lost to automation through AI. However, rather than fear this future, we should now be looking to it, making predictions on which careers may be affected and providing insight so we can plan and adapt our future career choices. 
Another area which is of great concern to, I think, us all is a topic of privacy and transparency. For my generation, the data held about us is going to play a massive part in our lives. AI is currently, and in the future will be, used more extensively to make predictions, decisions, and assess risk on what we choose to do based on just our current past, uh, past choices. Take, for example, online shopping. Literally everything you click on or buy is being fed into a data recommendation system, which then attempts to predict through AI what you might want to buy next. Effectively, eliminating freedom of choice when shopping online when comparing to being able to browse in a traditional brick and mortar store. Likewise, the way we consume media is also changing. As a generation, we are now able to choose what we want to watch or listen to and when, which is great, but like online shopping, suggestions to what we consume are being tailored, so again, limiting freedom of choice and discovery. Overall, we're living in a culture where it is almost impossible to opt out of data collection and a world where privacy is becoming more and more difficult. So maybe as a society, we need to step back and ask ethically if collecting and storing so much personal data is a good thing in the long term. If not, take voluntary action to resolve this issue and not wait for legislation to force change. So with such varied comprehension of AI and with the ethical and privacy questions, it got me thinking how I could improve understanding, especially within my own generation. As it's quite apparent, like I've already talked about, AI will influence and play a major role in our lives. And so my idea for an AI youth programme was born with the sole aim to encourage more young people aged between 13 and 25 to understand and explore the world of AI. Now, even though I'm still in the early stages of development, the current plan for the platform is to educate young people to how AI is being used and implemented today and how it might be used in the future through online resources and learning tools. Additionally, the intention is to provide careers advice to highlight areas where AI may be more prevalent, similarly to provide guidance for those who would like to explore technology or AI as a career. Overall, it is really hard to cover this vast but very important topic in a 10-minute talk, but hopefully some of the points I have raised highlight some of the key issues we're all starting to face and how different the future for my generation might be living in a world dominated by AI and that the current perception and understanding of AI is so varied in that some people generally think we have general AI or are close to making this breakthrough. But the reality is we may be a long way off from realising the next evolution of AI, especially as we have now only just started making noticeable advancements in narrow AI through machine learning after over 60 years of research in the field. But I think from my own experience, the message is plain and simple, that we need to plan, collaborate, and prepare through education and outreach for the future technological world. Remember, I am just one piece of the puzzle, and we've all got to work together to make real change. Um, thank you for listening.